<laughs> All right, today we're gonna to be talking about the top five ways or places to get a turtle or tortoise. You guys have asked me this uh, in countless videos, where to get a turtle or a tortoise, and today I'm gonna to give you my top five and the pros and cons of each one. All right, so one of the first places I think a lot of us have seen turtles and tortoises and maybe even gotten your first turtle or tortoise, and that is a pet store. And here I have a red-eared slider. This is one of the most common turtles sold in pet stores today. Uh, whether you're in the US or around the world, these guys are pretty much everywhere. And uh, they're readily available, uh, oftentimes only about 20 bucks at the most. A hardy turtle, uh, if you get one, they will pretty much thrive for you. They do get a bit bigger than I think most people are kind of prepared for. Uh, this is an adult female. And you know, the thing with pet stores is it's, it's a good spot if you're looking to be able to see one up close and be able to get your hands on one. You don't necessarily know where that turtle or tortoise came from. The pet store themselves may not even know. So a lot of times pet stores don't even have actual details on the animals they sell. They just buy them from a dealer and then just turn them around and sell them. So if you're looking for any further details on the animals that they have available, a lot of times it's not just gonna be there. So pet stores can be good. Um, if you're just looking to get in there and get your hands on some, check them out. Um, there are some decent pet stores out there. They're, especially the reptile specialty stores, they're gonna be a bit more helpful. They're gonna be a bit more knowledgeable. I do like going in them. It's fun to walk in there. All right, so next would be the reptile shows. And reptile shows are awesome. We all love going to them. We all love walking around, getting to see all the animals. You go to a dealer's table, there's a wide swath of things. A lot of times it's just leopard geckos and ball pythons, but every now and then you get lucky and there's some turtles and tortoises there. And in fact, I have this oh, beautiful Burmese mountain tortoise. I got this one from Vic Morgan at a Daytona Reptile Expo. And it was fantastic. It worked out great. I actually got to meet Vic. I got to ask him. <laughs> so angry. <laughs> I actually got to meet Vic, ask him a lot of questions about the species and kind of pick his brain um, about Burmese mountain tortoises, uh, both their care, their feeding, nuances, little things that, you know, I didn't really know Vic was able to fill me in on. So sometimes you're able to go to a reptile show and maybe the dealer or whoever has their table set up, maybe they're the ones that bred the animals and know all of the background on them. But again, sometimes like pet stores, sometimes they're just there selling animals that they maybe bought from somebody who bought from somebody who bought from somebody. One of the first things I would say is always ask questions. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions, whether you're in a pet store, in a reptile show, or any other venue. Just ask the questions and see what kind of answers you get. So reptile shows, I would say the pros, you get to see the animals. You get to, uh, you know, a lot of times you get to see a selection of the animals, which is good. Uh, you can kind of do a, a quick health inspection on any of them that are available. Um, the cons, um, not every dealer and not every table is necessarily the person that bred those animals and knows uh, the history of those animals. So you wanna weigh it out. If in doubt, just don't buy. All right, so one of the next options, and this has probably become one of the most popular options for getting any animal within the last 10 or 15 years, and that is online websites and online classifieds. Um, at the touch of a button, literally you can click your mouse, you can type in a few things in the, in the, <laughs> to the web, and you can go to you know, kingsnake.com classifieds, fauna classifieds, um, there's even Facebook classified. So if you want to be able to find almost anything, you can just type it into the search bar and be able to find it. Um, this is great. If, if there's something that you're really looking to get, if there's something you really want to work with, chances are there's somebody out there that is taking the time and working with those things. 
Now, the downside is you may not be able to see those animals in person. You're buying online. They're gonna be shipped to you. Odds are, unless you get lucky enough that you live next to them. So buying online, it's a little bit of a leap of faith, but again, if you ask the right questions and if they're a good seller, then they should be down to talk to you about it. If they don't wanna take the time to actually talk to you about the animals or give you current photos of them, uh, if they don't wanna take the time to do that, probably not worth your money. All right, so the next option is adoptions and rehomes. And this is one of my favorites. And this is how I end up with, you know, turtles and tortoises like this guy. And that is through people that just simply, you know, maybe they had the animal over a period of years and they moved and they have a new living situation and they just don't have the room. Maybe if somebody got it and they're going off over to college and their parents can't take on the, the intense care of a sulcata, for example, you know, they need to find a new home. So. Uh, there's always going to be reptiles um, in need of new homes. So uh, get yourself plugged in. Check out your local uh, reptile groups, reptile stores. A lot of times we'll even have adoption days and uh, Facebook groups for adoptions. And uh, there's always, you know, turtles and tortoises. That <laughs> there's always ones that need good homes. And uh, it's, it, it's really satisfying to be able to give a home to an animal that needs it. So if I was gonna give the positives and negatives of adopting, I would say the positives, um, you can end up with some really fantastic animals. Um, there's often a bunch of them available. So uh, you, you, a lot of times you can actually end up with options depending on where you live. Uh, the downside is, you know, you don't necessarily know the baggage that these animals come with. You don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of the care that they had before. So sometimes they can be a little quirky. Uh, like Bumpy, for example, <laughs> he, he showed up with a pyramided shell and he's got like kind of a little bit of a wheeze, but um, he, he's chasing the other tortoise right now, but he, he feeds well and he does really good. So um, I love adopting turtles and tortoises. It's one of my favorite things and uh, it's, it's cool to kind of see them, you know, move in and do well. All right, and my last, and this is probably my favorite way to get turtles and tortoises, is just to network, make friends. Uh, get out there and meet different people that work with turtles and tortoises and share the same interest as you. Um, and this really applies across all reptiles. Uh, when you meet other reptile people and you get to know them, uh, oftentimes somebody may have some offspring and they need a new home. Uh, somebody may be willing to work out a trade. Say you have something that you, you know, you're interested in, but you also happen to have you know, an extra or two of something that they want. It's, it's a fantastic way for everybody to kind of share in the hobby. And we also help each other out because we're all able to kind of share information. We're able to share, hey, this works for me. Hey, this didn't work for me. You know, and we all end up you know, benefiting from it. And likewise, you can also join some groups like the TTPG, the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group. Now they're a group that's focused on captive care and breeding of turtles and tortoises. And being a group member, you actually get to, uh, you know, share not only share information with everybody, but you also get that opportunity to get in on um, turtles and tortoises becoming available. And everybody works together to help everybody find the things that they're looking for. Uh, captive breeding of turtles and tortoises is an important part of conservation, conservation through preservation. So by having, you know, turtles in captivity, we can definitely assure that they'll never disappear entirely from the planet. Um, and by people actually caring and, and doing the hard work to uh, care for these animals and do it in the right way, uh, it, it works out great for us, but it works out even better for the animals. Uh, examples I have of turtles that I've gotten through friends would include uh, getting my Chinese box turtle uh, through Anthony from the turtle room, uh, getting the leopard tortoises through my friend Jordan Danini, uh, the cherry heads from my friend Charlie Moorcroft. I mean, the list goes on and it feels good to be able to share not only this interest, but the animals and um, kind of give something back, back and forth to each other. So uh, I, re I really like doing that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're all doing well. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Peace.